today we talk about my favorite topic in astrology which is about past life and uh, present lives and what you have to develop in this life or if you do not believe in past lives then uh, you can take it what you come with naturally talented with in this life what you're born naturally talented or what you develop naturally in your early age probably in the first 20 to 30 years in your life um, versus what you have to develop later in life and this is indicated this most important indication in your horoscope there is nothing more important in your horoscope than the position of Ketu and Raku or, or as they're known in Western astrology south node and north node of the moon they're the reason the person incarnates back in the earth comes back to earth to learn the lesson of these uh, planets or these points as we call them in astrology so if you learn what you have to focus on in this life you have it so much more clearer picture about your path in life and about what's good for you and what you have to let go of uh, let go of and usually Keto or the South Node will indicate what we were really good in past life with, what we focus in past life, where we uh, feel confident. Uh, uh, so usually these, uh, the place where Keto is placed in our horoscope will show us uh, where we have more natural talent or skill or where we feel more confident in the oh, we're just better in the first part of life and Rahu will show us uh, where what we have to develop in this life, what we haven't focused in past lives, if you don't believe in past lives, in the early part of your life, and what you will develop later on in life, usually in the second part of life, after 35, 40 onwards. So you have a bit of difficulties where Raku is, in the areas of life where Raku indicates, um, and uh, because Ketu, you also have some boredom in the house of uh, where Ketu indicates, because it's something you've already learn how to use it, learn how to be good at it, you know, so they're, they're not easy positions, but they're very interesting because it will give you such depth of understanding about your uh, yourself. And what I want you to go is I want you to go to my website, astrolada.com, go to my birth chart calculator, and I want you to, if you know your time of birth, enter it correctly, then you'll be able to see the house positions of Keto and Rahu on the south node and the north node. Uh, and if you don't know your time of birth, then just look at the sign position of Rahu and Ketu. The sign position will be given underneath on the table where it will say Ketu is in Aries or Ketu is in Libra. Rahu is uh, always the opposite sign. They're always, the south node is always opposite the north node. You know, because if you have developed something in the past life, the opposite, you haven't much developed, you know. And, uh, and uh, when you get that chart, or if you're using Western chart to get this, you, but if you're using mine, this is what you're going to get. For instance, you might get Ketu here, and Rahu will be here in the 10th, 4th sign, 10th sign. But I want you to take a look this time of the house position. You can have the house, the houses are indicated with Roman numericals. So you can have it uh, house 3 and house 4 in the fourth sign together. So basically Ketu will, if the uh, sign is indicated by one of the squares, each one square, each square is one sign. And uh, uh, what the sign is, you can see from the table underneath. So you can see which sign Ketu is in, which sign Raku is in. And you will see that there is also Roman numericals there, is the house cusps that are inside. It's a bit difficult, but I just want you to pay attention to these Roman numericals. So if you have, um, uh, Ketu uh, with the third and fourth house cups, you'll have Rahu with the ninth and tenth house cups in the opposite. So I would want you to listen the video for which says North Node in tenth house or North Node in ninth house. Both of these videos because I'll be indicating them by the position of the North Node. Always Rahu in tenth house or Rahu in ninth house. And you will learn what your karmic duties are in this life, what you have to focus on in this life, what you have to learn to let go of, which is Ketu usually. Uh, and uh, it, it's really amazing. It's the best part of astrology. So what happens when you have the North Node, Raku, as we call it also, in Sagittarius, which is the ninth sign, so it corresponds to the ninth house in astrology. So if you have the North Node in the ninth house, uh, indicated by Roman numerical on my website, or in Sagittarius, or it's indicated in a Western chart like this, uh, 
it's sorry, I made it the opposite way. It's indicated like that. Raffle in the ninth house uh, or Sagittarius. Then you immediately will have the south node or Ketu in the third house or in the sign of Gemini. And what does it mean? Ketu indicates past life. What did you develop in past life? Or what came naturally to you from early age? Or Gemini qualities. These are people who are extremely skillful. Gemini is probably the most witty sign of all. I'm not talking wisdom. This is not deep wisdom coming from on the deep matters of humanity. No, these are practical, skillful people who know how to navigate uh, the world, who know how to deal with, um, who know how to communicate, who know how to, uh, a third house is being extremely skillful with the hands, having knowledge and having willpower. Third house is the house uh, in astrology, in Vedic astrology of willpower. So. Uh, these people developed this to good extent in past life and uh, they, they were gathering a lot of knowledge, a lot of information from past life. Third house is information and skills while ninth house is purpose and higher knowledge. So what happened? These people are very skillful, very knowledgeable, they're full of information, they're full of different uh, skills, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's a joy to talk with these people. These people can out uh, dispute you in everything, you know, they would always, uh, they would have such great ability in communicate, to communicate their ideas and their, uh, you know, their point of view and their logic, they're great, the sweetness is amazing. And, uh, but what they're lacking, what they haven't developed in a past life is Sagittarius traits so of the ninth house, which is purpose. So they have all these skills, they have all this knowledge, they have all this courage to go into things, but they're lacking a one specific goal to put it in. And basically it can be disheartening sometimes, you know. So these people, they start fluctuating from early age trying to find a reason, a meaning, something bigger, something philosophical. It's not always a philosophical ideal, but something uh, that will help them utilize a goal, a purpose. You know, Sagittarius is the sign of the uh, archer who is shooting towards a purpose, a goal. And uh, these really skillful Gemini type of court, the third, uh, third house people who develop so many skills, they need something to apply those skills for, you know. And they have the knowledge, they have the skills, they don't need to gather any more uh, information, they don't need to anymore uh, learn new skills and techniques, no, they, they have it. Very naturally it comes to them. What they have in this life, what they struggle with finding is purpose. So basically what happens is that at a certain period in their life they might all of a sudden discover something and go crazy about it. They might decide that they want to, to do all organic, to go all organic and they delve all their power, they, they can become fanatical in that extreme to their purpose and goal. And soon after that, this crashes. It's very often that they'll, they'll be obsessed about something for a period of time, a couple of years, two, three years, and then they'll lose the incentive and the excitement about it because they haven't developed the sustained purposeful ability to sustain a goal and to sustain the view of, you know, uh, the, the, the view and the goal and the bigger picture of what they want to achieve, you know, of the purpose. And they have to learn maybe a few times in their life they'll get excited to extreme about something, maybe some religion, some philosophy, some kind of work, you know, some kind of uh, meaning in life. They'll say, that's it, that's my meaning in life. I have to help women or I have to do this. Or it doesn't have to be always highly spiritual, you know. It can be the meaning of life. All of a sudden they decide to take over, uh, you know, the stock market. And they get totally obsessed with that purpose and goal. And they have so many skills, they put those to use, but they cannot keep this for a long time. They cannot keep the sustained efforts in one direction, in one purpose, longly. Or if it's a belief system, it soon, um, a few, uh, at least a few times it will happen in their life uh, until they learn how to sustain, how to find also meaningful purposes. So these people might be finding purposes which are not so worthy, you know? Because um, not only they, it's a bit harder to sustain their goals, it's a bit harder and it comes a bit later in life to find meaningful purposes. And ultimately, 
The most meaningful person, purpose in life is developing your self-knowledge, nine houses, self-knowledge, and developing yourself to, to a higher state, you know, to high understanding, improving on yourself, knowing yourself better and spiritually, spiritual development. This is the highest manifestation of the ninth house. So if these people can develop, start focusing from early age on spiritual development, this will be helpful for them, but often they'll probably change a few exotic systems, a few exotic systems of uh, uh, beliefs or goals and uh, till they finally settle down later, usually towards their 30s, the end of their 30s, the beginning of their 40s. Or the other thing that can happen is that they just choose unworthy goals which soon they feel empty to them, so they can be a bit manic, depressed. I'm not saying that, but it's like, ooh, this is I'm gonna do, ooh, ooh, this is my mission, and then a few months down, uh, uh, doesn't feel so meaningful anymore, you know, till they find the worthy goals. And uh, yes, so that's uh, the interesting thing about this position. Develop your higher wisdom, your higher knowledge, your uh, faith. It's important for these people to develop faith, not to be only submerged in the logical world, in the intellectual world of the lower mind, but to be submerged in higher ideals and hopefully don't choose the unworthy one. You might swap a few before you settle.